How's it everybody? Um, I thought I'd be making a video today just to show you the difference between a couple of amplifiers. Um, I don't know how your lockdown has been treating you, but I've been pretty much stuck at home, haven't really gone out anywhere. Uh, so I've had to come up with other ideas of things to amuse myself with. So this um, is something I've really wanted to know and what is the difference between the three uh, sort of main designs of amplifiers that you can get out there. So what I've got here is I've got a Kiko Q-Class amplifier, which is a four-channel amplifier. And I've got a Cytronix uh, a PA a power amplifier over here. And then I've got a home theater amplifier over here. So this is sort of the entry-level amplifier from Ankyo for home theater. And this is sort of Kiko's top-of-the-range four-channel amplifier. And this is sort of a middle-of-the-range uh, um, monoblock. Well, not a monoblock, it's a... Uh, a two channel or the stereo power amplifier. So, this is actually quite impressively powerful. It's about 1900 RMS per channel. So, what I wanted to do is just take the well, firstly, unbox them so you can see what they actually look like. These two are brand new and this one is used. Um, and then actually open them and have a look inside and see how they differ between the two. I think the main difference that you're going to see between them is the um, power supplies. Are going to, I think the amplifiers might be similar between the three different designs, but the power supplies are going to be drastically different. Um, and they, they're all digital amplifiers as well, so let's see how they're going to be different um, and take them apart. So I'm going to start with the taking this one out of its box. That's going to be the easiest one to do. So um, these kicker boxes are just, they don't even take them or anything. And what's quite cool about kicker, I've opened this one before, but what's very cool about kicker is they always supply you with a um, burst sheet. So this, this particular amplifier here is making 717 watts. So quite a nice amp. And this is what it looks like. Gets fingerprints very easy. But yeah, it's a kicker amplifier, it's a four channel, and this one has actually got a built in processor as well, so I think that's pretty cool. And uh, let's have a look at it here. You got uh, all your adjustments for your crossovers on this side, and then on that side, you've got obviously your power inputs, your speaker out for the four amp two, and speaker out for amp one. Then you've got your inputs over here and your output over there. So you can literally just go in over here, and then if you wanted to run another amplifier, you can come out from here, or uh, your sub amp, your monoblock, can come from there. So yeah. That's what that amplifier looks like. Put it there. Then, this one uh, seems to be out the box already. Pretty heavy. Then, I think we should do some cutting here. Definitely could have chosen a bigger knife. You can actually see what actually comes in this um, this box. The first time I opened this one, it's like all your accessories, your antennas. Got the setup microphone over here. Um, two different uh, radio frequency type antennas. This one's for the Bluetooth. So yeah, that's it comes with.
pretty nice looking setup over there. So what my idea was really with this uh, amplifier USB would be to run obviously a surround sound system with this amplifier. It's pretty uh, impressive processing that it has. And then I wanted to use this one here for some subwoofers. Um, there's nothing like getting those ultra lows on proper power. So take the sub out from here and go into here. And then this one I just have lying around. So I thought may as well look inside three designs at the same time. So I don't know which one to take upon first. So I'd say let's start with them in order of most power. It's gonna be this one, it's gonna be the most powerful, then this one, then this one. But this is only four channels, so sort of unfair to compete them that way, but yeah, let's start here. So I think that uh, there's only real one way of getting these open and uh, I think you know how that's going to go. Uh, maybe that's a bit too easy. I'll go for the old fashioned way. Good old powered screwdriver thing. This should work. <laughs> This is the uh, outputs for this amplifier here. Kind of basic, it's got your HDMI inputs here, one output over there, and then your front speakers here, and your surrounds over here. So yeah, as you can see here, yeah, this is just a, a pretty basic um, uh, home theater amplifier for 5.1 surround sound. But being on here, it's not a bad brand. It's uh, kind of like the sound quality. And um, yeah, so let's take this apart and see what it looks like inside. That seems like so strange to take apart a brand new amplifier. But, gotta do it. Just a time, just like another season. Okay, so there I have all the amplifiers apart now, but unfortunately what ended up happening is that while I was busy taking the kicker apart, I ran out of memory and I didn't actually realize that. So unfortunately didn't see how that one comes apart, but um, it's just a couple of screws. It's a pretty simple design to strip apart. So this is the, uh, the big power amplifier here. So um, you can have a look at how it is inside. It's got some serious heat sinks going on over here. And it actually has three fans and these like cardboard ducts to sort of duct the air to the heat sinks. A lot of smoothing capacitors. And this this amplifier is, is 1900 RMS per channel. And well you can see that it's got this sort of hand sized block of, al of aluminium heat sinks going on over here. So yeah, that's how that looks inside. Then, let me put this one side. Then we have the little baby kicker amplifier. This is extremely nicely made. So have a look at that. Look at the size of the uh, input power cables. So it's actually, uh, that's the top of the amplifier there. But uh, that's why the writing's upside down. Look at the size of that. It's about the size of my pinky. So yeah, this is uh, a four gauge, takes a four gauge, and it takes an eight gauge for the um, output for the speaker wires. So yeah, there you can see how it is. It's uh, the ampl the amplifier itself. The transistors are actually mounted underneath. You see they they bolted to the plate. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, you can actually see this gap here between the PC board. Oops. The PC board you'll see down there is where all the transistors are. And they're mounted to the underside face of this amplifier. I haven't seen that 
before. Normally they mount them on the sides and then they're held down against the heat sinks by these tabs. You can see all these tabs over here. Um, yeah, so that's the, this is basically the power supply, part of the power supply here and some of the smoothing capacitors. Um, yeah, this is kind of a complicated design they've got going on here, so I'm not sure what's what here. Um, and then it also has the processing board, which is this little guy here. Zoom in. Then we have the Onkyo amplifier. Let me just move this one out of the way. Throw him down over there. Crash. Now we have the Onkyo amplifier. This one's a little bit easier to see what's what on it. Okay, so transformer over here, some smoothing caps for the main power amplifier. So the power supply is actually built into the main amplifier board. And it's got two separate power supplies. So it seems to have a separate power supply over here. This one seems to be the power for all the processors. And the bridge rectifier on the, is, is mounted here in space and then it's regulated down there. Then this one's bridge rectifier for the, for the amplifier board is mounted to the chassis. So that's your main amplifier board here, your control board back there, your video processing, and I think digital processing board in one. Yeah, Dolby Digital DTS. So this is your digital uh, video and audio processing board in one there. So I just thought I'd make something a little bit different because I'm into sound and I like taking things apart and looking what they look like inside. So, um, yeah, so hopefully you, you like this video and you find it fascinating what these amplifiers look like inside. So let me stack them all up and take a nice picture of them. Sweet. But yeah, hopefully you found this uh, video interesting. And uh, um, if you did, please uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video and don't forget to leave a comment tell me what I should have done here um, and also if you're into sound there's a, a channel that I like looking at is you must take a look at uh, PH sound I'll leave a link in the, the description uh, he does ultra high and uh, car audio setups so just take a very good pair of headphones and just browse through his channel and look at uh, some of his videos you'll be amazed at the sound quality he actually gets so have a look at his channel, you might be interested, especially if you're into sound, that's what might have brought you here. But yeah, and uh, yeah, so I have to put all this stuff back together again. See you in the next one.